As you guys know, we do not have a college version of bet on it just yet, just because there's not a ton of games. We decided, you know, let's see how things start to progress in the next few weeks. But then I text Ralph Michaels and he said, but I've got all these great TNA angles for you, Kelly. And I said, fine, we're going to do a TNA segment for college football this week. Ralph, tell the viewers what you got for them. Well, before we get in wow numbers, let, let's just get it in people's heads. What's the normal week one? Is it the home teams? Is it the road teams? Is it the favorites or is it the dogs? So I went through and, and in the last seven years, I went through weeks one through four in college football because those are mostly non-conference games. So the favorites won 50.7%, basically a toss up. Double digit favorites, 51.9%. 24 point plus favorites, 50.8%, no big deal. But when I looked at away favorites, the first couple weeks of the season, away favorites in college football, 54.7%. Double digit away favorites, this is what I'm getting to, 57.6% in college football the first four weeks. 17 plus point favorites, 54.7. And 24 plus point favorites, 53.8. So again, a lot of nothings early, but what stuck out to me, double digit away favorites, 57.6% the first four weeks in college football. That's really interesting. That kind of goes against what I'm looking for is those double digit home dogs. Appreciate you finding that one. What else have you dug up for us? Well, you know, there's been a lot of talk, Kelly, about spring practices and Week one in college football, the teams that had more spring practices went 4-0 and against the spread. So will that matter? You know, I'm not sure, but I will tell you this. If you go to wagertalk.com, go to the Ralph Michaels page, you will have a two-page report which you can download for free, which breaks out every team's spring practice alphabetically, by highest to lowest, and by conference. So couple things I want to mention this week. Coastal Carolina, 15 spring practices, Kansas, zero. Arkansas State, 11 spring practices and a game under their belt against your Kansas State Wildcats, zero spring practices. Louisville, seven. Western Kentucky, zero. So we'll see how much that matters, but certainly... You have to be aware of those numbers when you're handicapping these early few weeks in college football. Ralph, now you, you kind of hit the nail on the head there with Arkansas State, but I thought I saw you tweet something about teams that already had one game versus teams that hadn't played a game. Well, you are you reading my notes, Kelly? Because that no, is the next just, point I'm going to bring. I, I know that it's a good K-State thing, so I need you to like backtrack that one for me. Well, again, this, like I said in the NFL, this season is unique. So normally when a team plays, a team has a game under their belt by playing a game versus a team playing their first game, you know, it's a different advantage than it is. But let me, I have to share the numbers with you. Since 2012, you would think a team that played a game has a game under their belt advantage would be better than a team, but it Absolutely. hasn't been the case. And in fact, they've only covered 40% of the time. So, you know, we were talking off air. We heard some numbers that really surprised me. This number surprised me almost as, as much as any number that I've ever pulled out of database. It's not a wow number, but to think that the team that has the advantage has only covered 40%, there are quite a bit. UAB over Miami, UAB has a game under the belt. Army over ULM, Arkansas, K-State. South Alabama, Tulane, UTEP, Texas, and Texas Tech, UTSA. Now, I will say this. I'm reporting the numbers as they are. They're only 40%. But in my mind, when I'm handicapping a game, I still have to give that team an extra check mark that has played a game and has a game under their belt, especially now when we haven't had any spring practices and the fall camps have been so irregular compared. So... A number that I, I give out, but a number that I'm not really even using this year. But at least you now know what those numbers are. All right. Is that it that you have for me today? 
Two more things. First, I want yes. to talk about totals. Now, a low total of 45 isn't really that low, but the way college football has changed over the years, a total of 43 is pretty low. Over or under, Kelly, the first four games of the season when we have a total of 43 or less? Under. No, over the total. <laughs> College football games, weeks one I'm through four. I'm always wrong on those. I should fade myself. Every single time Ralph asks me a question on either the college or the NFL show, I always screw it up. It does not matter. I got to go against what my initial thought process is. There's been, 100 and, there's been 104 games over the last six years that have had totals of 43 or less, 61.5%. Now, I will say this again. This season's a little different. My favorite plays for over-unders was to find SEC teams with good defenses that played very crappy teams and had high-scoring games early because then when they played their SEC schedule, we saw 10 to 7 scores, 13 to 7 scores. So that has a lot to do with this. With the traditional schedule of the past, you played a lot of patsies early where you might win games 55 to nothing or 44 to 7, you know, which aren't going to be the same this year with the ACC only playing one non conference game and the SEC playing none. Last two, Kelly, are both sort of in the same category. Teams that only won three or fewer games last year and they're a favorite in game one against FBS foes. Those teams have only gone 11 and 26 against the spread, 29%. Only one team fits in that category this week, and that's Kansas. Kansas is playing Coastal Carolina. Oh, yeah, by the way, Coastal Carolina had that 15 nothing spring practice edge. So a team that only won three or fewer games, now expected to come and be a favorite against an FBS foe in week one, 29.7%. And on the flip side, teams that won 10 or more games last year, and now they're a dog in game one. Those teams have only gone 9-46 and 46 straight up. 18 and 35 against the spread. That's 34%. So what teams won 10 or more games this year and they're a dog? That would be Louisiana Tech and ULL. So I will say this. I'm going to go back to my Phil Steele days and, and North Coast days when, you know, at Phil Steele, we used to talk to a lot of football coaches. I guarantee you to a T, many of them have told me, You've got these kids that are high on themselves in August. If they are prepping for a team that won 10 games week one, it is much easier to prepare them and have them ready and have them focused to play a 10-win team than it is to play a team that won zero, one, or two games. So they may not be playing a power five team, but they are playing a team that cashed, that won 10 or more games the previous year. That's really interesting. I, I kind of... I have Coastal Carolina circled. I definitely have ULL circled. Now I'm de definitely going to be making a play on them over Iowa State. But Coastal Carolina, the line move kind of scared me a little bit. Maybe your little practice gave me a little bit of nudge. Thank you, Ralph Michaels. Make sure you guys are giving Ralph a follow at Cal Sports LV on Twitter.